Hey, it's Caroline, career and leadership coach. And today I want to talk all about resumes. Now, is your resume a dog's breakfast? And what I mean by that is it's plain messy. So here's the thing. Most people, they start their resume uh, coming out of uni and every time they have a new job, they just add a new section to their resume. So they end up with a monster of a document that has totally lost its, its meaning and really doesn't give the, the, the best first impression. So basically they end up with a document that's all over the place that is too text heavy, that uses certain language that they did maybe 15 or 20 years ago and it's really not helping them to get to that next level. Now, uh, I have worked as a, a recruiter and a HR professional uh, for over 12 years. And so the, the, the recruitment jobs that I've had were international. And I worked with people in the States, in Europe, in Asia, in, in, in New Zealand, Australia, whatsoever. So I've seen a lot of resumes. And so it always fascinated me to see like how people represent themselves on a resume. And I could see that most people are all the same, even though people are unique. You see like the contradiction here, the conflict that it is, you should be unique, but resumes all end up looking the same. And so if you have one position that you're recruiting for and you receive like hundreds of resumes that are the same, it, it's really difficult to stand out and cut through. So what I work on with my clients is to co-create a resume that's authentic and that is based on how you want to position yourself. So I look at resumes in terms of like um, really having a piece of paper that really articulates clearly what it is that you can bring to the table. It's a sales document and you have to sell you. So the old way of, uh, of creating a resume was uh, you have uh, your career objective, you had, um, uh, and, and then you had basically your education and your career history. And your career history was a list of exactly what you have done uh, for which companies and uh, maybe you mentioned some achievements. And so the new way of really targeting your resume is to treat it as a sales document. Like, how do you want to position yourself and how do you want to really come across to the other person? So to all my clients, I always give this analogy and it's my favorite analogy that I came up with. And I don't know how I came up with it. I just did. Think about a, a movie, a movie. How long is a movie? It's about between like uh, uh, an hour and a half, 90 minutes, two hours long movie. And when you see a trailer of a movie, it's only 90 seconds. And in 90 seconds, you know the type of movie, It's an, if it's an adventure, if it's a horror movie, if it's a romantic movie, the quality of actors, and you have an idea about what's the movie all about. But they had to cut a two-hour movie, a long movie, down to 90 seconds. And in those 90 seconds, you decided whether or not you wanted to see that movie whether or not you want to buy tickets and go to the theater to actually watch or the cinema to actually watch that movie. So, and that is how I want you to treat your resume. You need to be able to create a document that is only a snapshot of how, what you want them to see, how you want to be perceived. So people don't care about like that you take up like half of the page with something that you have done 15 years ago. They're not going to pay you 150, 200K, 250K for that. Yes, that might be invaluable experience that led you to where you are today. And you can talk to that in an interview in the next step of the process. But in the beginning, what you need to do is think about your resume needs to get you the interview. That's the only job a resume has. So if you do not get interviews, that means your resume isn't doing its job.
isn't positioning you in the right light. If you get interviews for the wrong type of roles or to low level roles or just like not the right skill set, that means that you are not using um, your resume to communicate clearly what level you're playing at, what type of roles you want and so on. So you need to use that document to clearly state what it is that you want to achieve. Now, you do that not by writing a career objective, uh, what you want to achieve, because that is not the way a good resume is constructed. Um, a good resume talks about them and their problem and how you can solve that with the skills and experience that you have gained over the 15, 20 years that you have worked. And Basically, it all boils down to a couple of things. First, you need to get crystal clear on you, what your unique value proposition is. Why should somebody hire you instead of the other candidate? Because think about it, whether it's a, a recruiter, an HR, or a decision maker that receives your resume, they receive probably like 100, 150, even can go for some positions up to 1,000 resumes for one job ad. And so they need to be able to cut out people that actually that they don't think that fits. So imagine if you have 150 resumes and from that 150 resumes, maybe take, I'm really being generous here, take that 100 people are not relevant. You still have 50 people that are believing that know that they can do the job standing on their head with their eyes closed or that it might be a little stretch, but they have, have the skills and experience for it. So you need to be able to make sure that in your resume, in your messaging of your resume, that you clearly state your unique value proposition. Why they should invite you for an interview or why not? Like, and you need to make that clear to them. And you can't rely on assumptions because this is another thing that a lot of people do is uh, they hope that the other person will see their skills that they have. And so they assume that it will be clear to them. So for example, if you work for a company XYZ, you should be able to do like ABC. But if you don't really aren't clear about that to them, then you're going to miss out on that. That's my dog, by the way. <laughs> um, so you have to make sure that you really pinpoint what your unique value proposition is. And once you are crystal clear on that, you are able to create what I call a pitch or a career statement. And so a career statement is basically your elevated pitch. And it's you put that on the start of your resume or at the start of your resume, but you also use that on your LinkedIn profile. And in an interview, when they ask you the question, tell me about yourself. So you use that again and again and again. So your pitch is what you stand for, what the problem you can solve and your unique value proposition. But So you create your pitch and that pitch you actually I use as a foundation to build your resume. And you will see like everything that you put on your resume needs to be aligned with that pitch. So that pitch, you can, the best way to look at it is like it is your promise to an organization, what you can do, what you can bring to the table. And so, and that promise, then you look at all the rest of the experience. What's really aligned with that and what isn't? So you are able to cut out the things that actually you think like that is not going to be relevant to the promise that I'm making. It's good information and I might even tell it in an interview, but there is no need to already put that on your resume. So think and just remember one important thing. Your resume needs to be your uh, sales tool, your, your sales document, and only needs to give a snapshot, a teaser of what it is that you can bring to the table. Now, here is a big mistake that I see other people, often people make, is um, they have somebody else write their resume. 
This is a big no-no for me and all the clients that I work with. I co-create resumes with my clients because they are the expert in what they do. I'm the expert in what I do. And it's that combination that makes it perfect and really targeted and really gets you the result that you're looking for. Because if you have somebody else writing your resume, the issue or you copy paste it from things that actually sound good, the issue that you're going to have is that basically you won't be able to talk to your resume when it comes down to the interview. So in an interview, you go deep and you need to be able to uh, set yourself apart again from the other candidates that they're interviewing. And so you need to be able to pull up examples and results that you have achieved. And I'm not talking only about numbers. I'm talking about the, the solutions to the problems that you solve. And often, if you haven't written uh, down your, your, your own resume, you don't have that depth uh, of that alignment. And so a lot of people that have their resume written, then they become, uh, they, they, they put themselves in a situation that they get interviews for jobs they might or might not want or might be aligned or might not be aligned with them. But then they actually like have the, the, the issue that they can't really talk to, um, talk to that. And they struggle really getting the job and landing the job. And this is in particular very important when you're at a certain level. So if you're a senior manager with over 15 years experience, a head of a director, an executive, and you actually outsource that, the problem is that you will overwhelm people in an interview because you have so much skills and experience to offer. And when you're in an interview, you go in problem solution mode and you're just like waffle and you just overwhelm the other person. So that's why it's so important that that necessary evil that we call the resume is actually an end product of the journey that you went on, how aware and how reflected you, you have uh, the reflection that you have done on your career and on the jobs and actually bring that into a package that you're now going to sell as product you basically. So I hope this resonated with you in terms of like what you can do with your resume and how important it is to not have a, the piece of paper. It's like, I don't care about that piece of paper. It's about your ability to really communicate to others your unique value proposition, your message, your narrative, your story, and that you can tell that story. Now, a couple of things. If this resonated with you, give me thumbs up and really like like and share the, the live stream so more people can hear this message because it is so important that people get this because they're so stuck in their situation, don't know what to do, and they're making little tweaks on their resume. And it's like, that's not going to help you. You have to think about the bigger picture, how you want to position yourself. So as you can see, I'm very passionate about that. And I am very passionate in creating that message with my clients and then helping them co-create their resume and uh, really building a strategy around how they now can increase their visibility to stand out from the crowd and land their next six-figure leadership role. If you hear this message and we are not connected on LinkedIn, First thing that I want you to do next is connect with me. I'm all about networking and really expanding my network and in turn also your network because that is how I see uh, LinkedIn as a, a powerful platform uh, to connect people with, with each other. And a couple of things, if you're interested in, in refreshing your resume, in upgrading your resume, I have a free resume template. I will pop the link below this live stream in just a second. Download that template. And it's not about how the looks and the layout of that template. Again, I don't care. It's about the components of that template. I work on a specific uh, five-point framework in that template that I'm sharing in that template with you and it's so powerful because it's psychological triggers that will make all the difference between uh, how your resume is going to be perceived by the other person um, and so I will pop a link below this live stream go and check it out if you have any questions reach out to me I'm here to help and support you this is what I do I help six-figure leaders that want to progress their career all over the world whether it's in um, Australia New Zealand Singapore uh, Asia Europe, UK, um, uh, the US, whatever, wherever you're based, if you need help, I will be there and I will can help and serve you. This resume template is also 
not dependent on only Aussies uh, or Australians. Uh, it works for people. I have many clients in the US and in the UK, and it works actually all over the world. It's just universal principles that I teach in that template. Now, if you've been following me for a while, and if you say like, Caroline, it's quarter to, uh, quarter four of the year, the last quarter, and I really have been procrastinating on my career, and it's really time that I am getting in the driver's seat and really take charge and control over my career and have a career by design rather than to default, schedule a call in with me. So the um, the URL for that is newhorizoncoaching.com.au forward slash call and book in a call. And on the call, what we're going to do is a couple of things is, first of all, identify where you're stuck what your individual situation is. Then we're going to zoom out where you want to be, what's actually the road in between there, and how I can help achieve you your goal quicker and faster. Like I said, I work with people all over the world, so feel free, like wherever you are based, to book in a call and I will help you move forward. And at the end of the call, if you say, Caroline, I really want to work with you, then we can discuss that also. But otherwise, you will have invaluable information about how to progress with your career. And I would even throw in this, if you book a call and you want me to review your, your resume before the call, send me your resume. And I happily review that. I do that all the time for people. So send me your resume and um, let me know, like, okay, you booked in a call and uh, it would be great to discuss, like, potential things and strategies uh, on the call also. So I hope this helped. Again, thumbs up if this um, message resonated with you. And uh, if you have any questions, like uh, put it in the comments or direct message me with uh, whatever it is that you would hope or are hoping to discuss. And uh, that's it for today. So I hope you found it valuable and I 